I'm here today with Tofik Mohammed, a Google software engineer who has an insane story. He went from not knowing how to write a single line of code to getting into Google, a top tech company with a less than 1% acceptance rate. And to really uncover this crazy story, I brought him in here today. Tofik, could you give us your background before you got into Google? Yeah, um, so I started college in fall of 2020 at Georgia State and I was a computer science major. I had no coding experience prior to joining college. Literally, I'd never written a single line of code. One of our first tasks in our computer science classes was setting up our computers to run code. And that included like installing IDEs, installing like the Java SDK. Mm. And I had no idea what any of that meant. Like I had never like opened the terminal app on my laptop. It was really a nightmare. I felt like I was being thrown into a swimming pool and not knowing how to swim. So building on that, you had minimal coding experience. What were your career prospects like? Yeah, I applied to like hundreds of companies that semester and I only got one interview. Where? Chick-fil-A. And how did it go? Let's not talk about that. <laughs> okay, okay. So this kind of prompted me to kind of like do my projects on my own. Yeah. One thing I found online is that Raspberry Pis are a really cool way to like get your feet wet with yeah. like just building a whole system from like hardware to like really high level software. Yeah. So I bought a Raspberry Pi, which is like a really small computer. And um, yeah, I just looked up like top Raspberry Pi projects on Google. Yeah, the first one that came up was uh, a magic mirror, which is basically like a smart mirror that displays information on it. I learned so much from top to bottom how to like build something. I didn't do anything on my own. I followed a tutorial step by step wow. on how to build a magic mirror. It taught me a lot like about like Linux, because the Raspberry Pi runs on Linux. Learned how to SSH into it. Around the same time, I was also preparing my application for Georgia Tech. Because to be honest, like Georgia State is not renowned for its computer science program. And I wanted to go somewhere where I could really like utilize resources and, and reach my potential as a, as a computer scientist, I guess. So I really want to hear your success story and I'm sure the audience wants to as well. How did you actually get into Google? Yeah, so I really focused on my data structures class and algorithms and, and I took notes. I attended every class, didn't skip anything. Another thing I worked on was tailoring my resume for applications. I ran into you on campus and you gave me a lot of good advice on how to format it because I remember like my resume the year before was hot garbage. <laughs> hot garbage. And another thing I did was I started tracking my applications for these internships as opposed to just mass applying and just like waiting for whatever comes into my inbox. So it was very organized. I would update the status of each application mm -hmm. and it helped me a lot like to prepare for each interview and like for which stage I was at in each interview. And also very kindly, he's offering the application tracker. Link will be in the description down below. You guys can check it out. Make sure to like this video as well. And so tell me, how did you actually apply to Google? Yeah, so I think one of the most important things I've done in my career career to date is applying for these first and second year programs like Uber has one, Microsoft has one, Google has one. It's called Google Step. That's the one I applied to and I eventually ended up doing. Uh, like I said, it's a first and second year program for computer science students and the hiring bar is much, much lower. For example, they'll ask like a leak code easy instead of a leak code medium. That's and, huge. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, and I, I believe there are less rounds than the traditional SWE interview. So I highly recommend for less experienced computer science students to, yeah. to take advantage of these programs. Yeah, because instead of being in the big pool, you'll be in a concentrated pool. And did you have any connections in Google? Yeah, so my dad's friend worked at Google and uh, we had some really good conversations and we actually, she actually ended up giving me a, a referral. And I think that really helped me get my foot in the door in the application process. I got an interview like really soon after she submitted the referral. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. You wanna to try to separate yourself from everyone as much as you can like when you're yes. applying for these internships. And what's super nice is companies offer employees referral bonuses so they actually do wanna refer you. For sure, like if you show that you're like willing to learn and you're a hard worker, like they'll definitely be willing to give you a, a yeah. referral. So you got your foot in the door. How did you actually pass that interview? Yeah, so I think it was a combination of things. First of all, I was taking a data structures and algorithms class, like I said, during the whole interview process, which was like really cool because I was like, things that I was, be, that was gonna be tested on yeah. were things I was learning like two weeks prior. Wow. And um, in that class, they taught us to use something called the CSVis tool. It really helps you visualize how data moves in and out of data structures and how algorithms like populate like a dynamic programming tables. Mm. It has like all the arrays, linked lists, all those things. It also shows you pseudocode as it's running through the algorithm. Yeah, yeah for sure. Cool. Yeah, yeah, like I honestly, I, like I haven't seen anything like it like mm -hmm. on the internet. So I highly recommend using it, csvistool.com. So I practiced a bunch of leak code and I learned like you need to master a certain number of patterns in leak code. Like you don't want to memorize each mm -hmm. problem. You want to memorize like I guess the overarching pattern for each problem and then you'll be able to tackle any problem that a interviewer gives you. If you try to memorize it problem by problem, like, you, you know, you'll eventually- It doesn't sound natural. Yeah, and you'll, and you'll eventually be given a, a problem that you don't know. So you just wanna like master the overarching uh, principles like BFS, DFS, how to use a, a priority queue, mm -hmm. how to do all the binary tree traversals. So you wanna, you wanna master all those concepts. How long did this Google interview take? What was the process like? I applied for the position in early, early October. My first interview was like a week later. 
The interview process was one behavioral interview and two technical interviews. The behavioral interview happened on one day and the uh, two technicals happened on another day. So there were, uh, I guess, technically two rounds. Mm -hmm. And um, after those two rounds, I, I got the um, the offer like a week later. So end to end, it took like two weeks, which is pretty Oh, fast. wow. Wow, that's insane. I've heard it could take like six months sometimes. Yeah, yeah, honestly, it was a lot faster than I expected. And that internship cycle, what other offers did you get? While I was applying for Google Step, I, I had also applied for Facebook University, which Their is- Their first year. Yeah. Program, yeah. And uh, for Amazon, like their standard SDE program. But I got offers from both of them. And, and how much did they pay? How much How much does Google pay? All right, so now we're getting into the bread and butter. Okay, so my Google offer was $38 an hour. My Facebook offer was $40 an hour. And my Amazon offer was um, $60 an hour. Why did you reject Meta and Amazon? So I know it may seem like a dumb, dumb decision at service level to turn down a $60 an hour offer for a $38 an hour offer. But I think what you need to realize is that the end goal of these internships is to get a full-time offer. So you need to imagine yourself working at that company full-time. Mm -hmm. And at that time, uh, Facebook didn't have the best rep because they had done a couple rounds of layoffs before. And Amazon's culture is very well known in the industry for being kind of cutthroat. Mm -hmm. So I think Google just seemed like the the best fit for me. And another interesting point is that the Meta recruiter told me that their internship program had a 90% return offer, whereas Google's was around 50 to 60%. So Meta had an easier program, basically. It was easier to convert from in that. Industry. Yeah, sure. And at the time, me and you had discussed it and you gave me some really good advice on how to proceed. So why don't yeah. you go and tell the audience? So I told him that since Google is more difficult and Meta is easier to get into, why don't you take the more difficult thing? You were a sophomore at that time. Yeah. So you could really bet on yourself, try to develop your career and you're smart enough to get into Meta. So hopefully next year or anything like that, if for example, Google doesn't work out, you'll be able to do it, but really just bet on yourself and take your career kind of like in your own hands, you know? Yeah, it was great advice to be honest. And like I, I don't, I don't regret that decision to yeah. this day. And what was funny is the that summer, the following summer, Meta gave like no return offers. Yeah, no, actually, they had a bunch of layoffs, and like I think actually it was like almost ninety percent, maybe even more, maybe like let's just say around ninety percent of the interns didn't get a return offer. So yeah. it's actually the opposite of what I was told. Yeah, about. exactly, exactly. So, so that's another thing. Like you don't, like you shouldn't be naive and you shouldn't trust like what people tell you because like at the end of the day, it's a business. Unless I say it, but yeah, yeah. No, don't listen to that. But. All right, so now tell me, at Google, what was your project like? What were the perks at Google? Google. What was like a typical day in your life? Yeah, so I was based in Seattle that summer for my internship and I lived a couple minutes away from the office, which was pretty cool. I would usually get to the office around 8.30 so I could have time to grab breakfast. Breakfast was really cool, it was free. Free food. Yeah, yeah. they had a really nice buffet and um, like all sorts of options. And uh, it was very like Google-esque, like very, very stereotypical of, of what you imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would start working at 9 a.m., maybe grab a coffee before I actually sit down at my desk, which is also free. <laughs> And then, um, yeah, I'd get to coding. My project was like some dashboard that displayed some analytics for like a certain Google cloud process. So it was a pretty pretty good way of getting like my feet wet and how to write enterprise code, which is a lot different than writing like standard code. For sure. Yeah. Sure. My manager was really helpful. We had stand up every day and um, yeah, they like guided me through all like the like the, the workflows as a, as a Google engineer because everything they do is, is in-house. They don't use any third party services. So it was, um, there was a pretty big learning curve initially. Uh -huh. And then, um, yeah, lunch was at like around 12 p.m. So me and the team, we'd go to the cafeteria. Free food again. Yeah, free food again, yeah. Me and the team would go to the, the cafeteria, grab lunch, and, and it was pretty cool, like, like you know, chatting with all these. Yeah, really networking with Yeah, yeah it was awesome. I was, like a, like, yeah. I was like a 19 year old chatting with like a bunch of really smart, like, you know. Seasoned vet veterans. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. It was a really, really great experience. And like, they treat you like an equal, so. It was awesome. And um, yeah, after lunch, like some days we'd go to the arcade and like play pool together, have like a-, a Oh, during the work day? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, spend the rest of the day working. Um, after after I clock out around five, maybe hit the gym. The gym was really, really nice. And yeah, there was a bunch of like really, really cool perks. I like, there was like a massage parlor in the office. Wow. There was a hair salon, nap pods. Wow, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's really, really cool. Like the office is also like on, right on the lake. So, so the views are really, really cool. There's like always seaplanes landing and taking off. It was like something I'd never experienced before. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, thankfully like I had a really, really great time that summer. And did you get a return offer? Yeah, so thankfully I got a return offer. I spent the next summer in New York. Internship went great. And thankfully got a return offer for full time. And now specifically, I wanna ask, what separates a Google engineer from the rest? I think one of the most important aspects of of being a, a valuable engineer is trying to be as independent as you can. Whenever you run into issues, like you don't just wanna jump straight into like asking for help or like, mm -hmm. you know, just like throwing the problem at like your, your, your tech lead and just having them fix it for you. You're never gonna learn if you don't like get your feet wet and try to do things on your own. So like try to be as independent as you can. You're smart enough to evaluate whether you're blocked and like if you're really, really blocked at a certain point, like obviously then you should ask for help, but 
you know, try to solve your problems on your own. Just by solving the problems on your own, you'll understand like how all the systems fit together, um, how things run, and you know, eventually you'll like start helping people with your expertise. Mm, yeah, yeah, for sure. There's a balance between like figuring things out versus asking for help. For sure, yeah. Like, I think, yeah. yeah, you should like. It's very important to strike a balance and like understanding like yeah. you know, when to do which. Because when you ask for help, you just kind of get the answer. But when you figure it out for yourself, you make it such that you don't have to ask questions in the future. When you're asking a question, make sure to do your homework ahead of time. For sure. uh, a lot of people just want quick fixes. Hey, what, what do I do? What do I do? But if you say, hey, I tried X, Y, and Z. X didn't work out so well. I think Y might be the approach. What do you think? People then know you did your research. You tried your best. You're actually a smart individual. You are somewhat independent. You just need a little more uh, push in this direction. Sure, it's like you said, if you just ask for help straight up, like yeah. without offering any alternative solutions or your or your train of thought, then it comes off as lazy and like, you know, your your, yeah. your tech lead will, will will sense that. Yeah. And they'll call you a bum. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. you don't want that to happen. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, Tofi, thank you so much for being on this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're interested in my absolutely free tech newsletter, link will be down below in the description. And just as always, I'll see you guys next time.